right? So what did Jesus do? He came to pay your debt. What's your debt? Death. Human death. Where the body returns to the dust and the soul leaves the body. Okay. So how could Jesus pay your human debt if he's not man? Now let me break down the gospel. How could Jesus pay your human debt if he's not man? So he has to be man, right? Here's the gospel, guys. Come on, Timothy. Answer your question, dude. Why then did he become man, Timothy? So he had to become man. And so he did. Then he died. But now, if he paid the debt of sin, meaning if your sin debt has been paid, and that debt is death, and payment has been expected, that means the debt is canceled, right? Well, if the debt is canceled, then death has to be canceled. Well, how do we know that Jesus paid the debt, and now the debt is canceled if he didn't rise again as a man? You get you understand now? Is it sinking in? The debt of sin is death. Well, if I pay the debt, that means the debt is canceled. That means death has to be canceled. If death is canceled, that means he can't remain dead. That means death will be abolished. And so what happened? He rose again, showing, see, the payment has been accepted. The debt has been canceled. Death has been destroyed. Right? I don't want to move on until it sinks in. Right? So... How could he stop being a man if he paid the debt of sin as a man? And that means he couldn't remain dead. He had to come back to life as a man. Because if he didn't come back to life as a man, then that means we have no proof the debt of sin has been canceled. Now, if everyone got this, yeah. I mean, imagine, Sammy, you're in prison, right? You're thrown in prison. Your debt has been paid. You got to be released from prison, right? Death is a prison. If the debt is paid, you got to be released. Now, let me then tie all this together so it can sink in. Tie all this together so it can sink in. Did Jesus know that by becoming a man, the Father would become his God? Yes. Did Jesus know that by becoming a man, he would die on the cross to pay the debt of sin, human sin, which is human death? Yes. Did he know that if that debt was paid by him dying as a man, if that debt was then accepted, that means the debt would have to be canceled and death would have, to, would have to be abolished. Did he know that? Yes. Did he know that meant that he would then have to be raised as a man, raised in that physical body because the debt of sin has been paid and he couldn't remain dead as a man any longer? Yes. But did he know that if he was raised as a man, he would remain a man forever, be attached to a physical body forever, have a human nature attached to his person forever, and therefore, because he would never stop being a man, the father would never stop being his God. Did he know that? Yes. And did he still do it? Yes. Why? Because Jesus is saying, I'm in love with you. I love you and I adore you. I'd rather do that than live without you even though I don't need you. That's the gospel. Okay? So we answered that question. 
How can Jesus be God if he has a God? Because he's the God man. He's the God man. Let me repeat. He's the God man. Always God, not always man, who became man. And as a man, he knew the father would be his God. He would remain a man in a physical body forever and ever. And the father would never stop being his God. Yeah, I mean, the relationship in the Trinity never changed. He's always the son of God, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit, Cuba. That was always true before creation. It will always be true. The only difference now, he's now a man. And as a man, the father's is God. So only one thing changed. It went from Jesus having no God over him to now having a God over him forever. That's the only thing that changed. You see what humanity has done to God? We have messed things up. We have added misery and pain and heartache to God. God doesn't need our love. Father, Holy Spirit perfectly love and adore one another with an infinite love. And they loved one another perfectly before creation, didn't need anything. They created out of their free will as the one God. So the only thing you've added, I've added, is heartache, misery, and pain. In other words, folks, before creation, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit never experienced pain, heartache, <clears throat> anger, and disappointment. Never. But when they brought creation into being, knowing full well that if we create free will creatures, of course, uh, orthochrist, Christos. Don't use the word hypostasis. People don't understand that term, orthochristos. And don't forget, historically, hypostasis meant substance. Say one person. One person. An eternal person who took on human nature. He's not a human person. He's one eternal person. Uncreated divine person who took on a human nature. I know what you mean by hypostasis, and I know what the church fathers meant later on. But if you read the history, some Christians interpreted hypostasios differently from others, creating confusion. But anyway, focus on this. Let this sink in. Because we'll wrap things up, and I'm going to do a part three. Let this thing sink in. Okay. Before creation, Father, Son, Holy Spirit enjoyed the perfect infinite love and fellowship of the other. Loving one another with an infinite love, needing no one else. After creation, for the first time, after creating free will creatures, the God had experienced pain, heartache, and anger. So the, all we have contributed to the Godhead is pain, misery, tears, heartbrokenness. Something they never experienced before creation. And as a result, Jesus. No, it's a human, Muhammad. Did you just come in the middle of this? I just explained. It's a human body, a human nature. Come on, man. Go back and listen from the beginning. As a result, Jesus knew if we create this creation out of our love, they're going to mess things up. And that means if I love them enough to not want them to perish, then I'm going to have to come into the world and become one of them, changing the dynamic of how I relate to the Father. Because prior to this, I have no God over me. But because of creatures, I'm going to have to become human, and then the Father becomes my God. That's what happened. Clear? See that? Did that sink in now? If that sunk in, this is how you're going to know it sank in. If that sunk in, this is how you're going to know. You're going to now be more in awe, more in love, more broken over your sin because of what we did to Jesus and the price he paid, a price he didn't have to pay because he doesn't need us, but he chose to do it. And why? Because he absolutely loves and adores us the father absolutely loves and adores us the holy spirit absolutely loves and adores us father son and spirit are in love with us 
And Jesus would rather become man and subjugate himself to a physical body, human nature, and making the Father's God than to live without you. And yet he doesn't need you, but he doesn't want to live without you because he loves you. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. So when you stand before Jesus and you ask them this, as you bow before his human feet, as you bow before the physical human feet of Jesus and you kiss his physical human feet, a physical body that he took from his blessed virgin mother, right? Panagia. Panagia. That's what they call her. The one who's all holy because her son made her all holy. Like we will be made all holy in his presence. And you look at him and you see that human face. That human face. Guys, imagine this. Because it's going to be a reality. Jesus is alive. He's real. He's not make-believe. You will see his human face. And when you see that human face and you see infinite beauty. Infinite beauty. Beauty itself. Looking at you and smiling at you in that human face. You're going to look at him and say, why? Why did you do this to yourself? Why did you enter a world to become man and take on a physical body? To live in the midst of humans who didn't know who you were. Who spat on you. Who cursed you. Who wanted to murder you who tried stoning you, who insulted you, who blasphemed you, beat you to a bloody pulp, whipped you to the point of dying, and nailed you on the cross, gasping for life as your human life was expiring, as your blessed mother beholding her firstborn, dying before her eyes, her heart being broken, and John there, heartbroken to see the one he loved dying, and then knowing you'd be raised in that physical body and you'd be attached to that physical body and you'd never discard that physical body and knowing the Father would remain your God forever. Why did you do it? You don't need me, right? You created me out of free will, not out of need, right? Yes. My Lord, my God, my Savior, then why'd you do it? Why did you do it? You didn't need me. He will look at you. He will say, my son, it's not <clears throat> whether I needed you or not. I did it because I love you. And you'll never know, never imagine, never fathom how great my love is for you. Don't you know I'm in love with you? I adore you and you are my creation and my heart aches for you. Our response will be our response should be, Son of God, Lord Jesus, thank you. You never gave up on me, and you didn't give me what I deserve. Thank you for loving me and being my God my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, I love you. I'm in love with you. And keep me in your heart forever. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah God Almighty in the flesh. To the glory of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Lord Jesus.